Hello, I'm Cab Daniels. Today we'll continue reading from I Am Gypsy, Chapter 5. Hey, sailor. Permission to come aboard? A beautiful woman was standing on the dock beside me, tossing ice cubes at KH. No, it couldn't be. Penelope, what are you doing here? KH leapt to his feet and jumped to the dock as if he'd been shot from a cannon. He grabbed the woman lifted her off her feet and spun around like a crazy man. Her cup of ice flew from her hand and a dozen seagulls dived on the pieces, hoping to find a morsel of something edible, but soon squawked away, disappointed. I wasn't disappointed though. It was Penelope. The wish after the green flash had worked. She'd come back from wherever she'd been. It was unbelievable, but it was happening and it was real. They kissed and held each other, giggling and laughing like children, until finally she said, so, who's this new girl in your life? Oh, no, it can't be true. Surely KH doesn't have someone new. Penelope is back, and she has to be the only one. This is Gypsy, he said, waving his hand across me and smiling like a proud new papa. She's breathtaking, Penelope pointed toward my deck. May I? Yes, 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 you absolutely may. Of course, yes, you never need permission, he said. He lifted her from her feet again and placed her gently on my deck. She was barefoot and as graceful as a cat. She moved over my deck like her feet were made for me. I liked having her aboard. She's beautiful, Penelope said, exactly what I was thinking. Is she fun to sail? I held my breath, waiting for his answer. She's perfect. It's like she knows what I'm thinking, and she does it before I ask. I've never sailed any boat like her. You're going to love her. I already do, she said sliding her hand across my wheel. He reached for her and she sat on his lap, her arms draped across his tanned shoulders. She played with his knotted hair and laughed. Dreadlocks? Really? Yeah, well, baby dreads for now. I had a lot to dread when you left. I'm back now. For good? That's up to you. She traced the line of his jaw with her fingertips and pulled his face toward hers. They kissed for a long time. I liked seeing people in love on my deck. It reminded me of how Thomas used to look at Terry so many years before. It was beautiful. She shoved his face away from hers. You really have to brush your teeth, sailor boy. He covered his mouth and tried not to smile. I'll be right back. He disappeared down my companion way and into the head to brush his teeth. Oh, look, there's another nautical term, head. That means bathroom on a boat. Believe it or not, sailors used to go to the very front of sailing ships and, well, you know, off the front of the ship, which they called the head. The name stuck for where people, well, you know. And to this day, the bathroom is the head. Penelope rubbed her hands across my bright work and winches, admiring me as much as I admired her. She was truly beautiful, and I understood why K.H. wanted her back. I still couldn't believe that wishing thing after the green flash actually worked. I hoped I'd get to do that again someday. Feel like going for a sail? K.H. poked his head, his teeth glistening through the companionway. Penelope smiled. Sure. Just let me get my things. She leapt from my deck and back onto the dock and grabbed a big green duffel bag, a backpack, and a guitar case. Oh, look. I think my theory about everyone having a guitar may be correct. I can't wait to hear her play. And maybe she'll sing for us. Cage helped her load her things aboard, and he cast off my lines. He went to work hoisting my mainsail right there in the slip. The wind was out of the east, so it was blowing right across my bow and down my deck. He's going to sail me backward, right out of the slip. He's just showing off for Penelope, but I like it. 
When my mainsail was fully aloft, he shoved the boom way out over my port rail, and the morning breeze started pushing us backward. I'll tell you about boom and port rail in a minute. I'd never been sailed backward before, and it felt weird. But just like everything else KH did, I wanted more of it. I wasn't built to sail backward, so nothing worked exactly right. But finally, he turned my wheel and my rudder went to work, bringing my stern around. Remember, stern means my butt. And we sailed away from the marina without ever starting that nasty old diesel. So I promised to tell you about boom and port. My boom is the big metal bar that sticks out from the back of my mast, and it holds the foot of the mainsail. It's also what the main sheet, oh, that's the line used to trim my mainsail, is attached to. So it's pretty important. Port and starboard are left and right on a boat. I don't know if it's true, but I've heard that the terms originated hundreds of years before I was born in sailing ships that carried cargo. The side of the ship that had a big hole in it to load cargo went toward the port, so it was called the port side. The other side had a big long paddle called a steering board. I've heard that steering board side was always opposite the port side, and that somehow, through the years, even after some smart guy invented a rudder, sailors shortened steering board to starboard, and that became right, and port became left. I have no idea if any of that is true, but it's a good story, and who am I to let facts stand in the way of a good story? The sun kept climbing into the sky, and the wind grew stronger. All of my sails were up and trimmed perfectly. It was a glorious day. Penelope held my wheel in her hand, but I didn't need much attention. The day was about K.H. and Penelope, not about me. I did my part to behave and let the two lovers reconnect. I can't believe you're back. So what's up? Are you just taking a break from school or what? She played with his baby dreads and tried to smile. It just wasn't for me. I thought it was what I was supposed to do. You know, I'm just not cut out for college. I don't want to be an engineer or a lawyer. I just want to play and sing and be with you. She sings. I knew it. I can't wait to hear. What about your folks? They're going to be pissed. Yeah, she said, they already are. But I can't live my life with them making decisions for me. I just can't believe you're back. It's too good to be true. Dreadhead kissed her as if he never wanted to spend a second without her. Nope, Dreadhead doesn't work. I'm sticking with Knothead. We really have to do something about your hair, Penelope said, pulling at the knots. Yeah, I know. It's terrible, isn't it? It really is. She laughed and kissed him again. Here come the dolphins. They always come at the best times. Look, Penelope whispered, pointing over my bow. A pair of bottlenose dolphins leapt from the water in practiced perfect unison and pierced the surface without a hint of a splash. They danced in my bow wave and kept leaping as if they were too excited to stay in the water. They were beautiful, just like Penelope and K.H. Where do you want to go? K.H. looked at her, his eyebrows raised. She smiled at him. Everywhere with you. And that's exactly what we did. We went everywhere. It was the best year ever. They took such good care of me. They scrubbed my hole to keep me clean. It was amazing how quickly all sorts of stuff would grow on my hull in the hot tropical water. When the growth would build up, I'd get slow, and KH didn't like that at all. So he kept me as clean as a whistle. It made me laugh how the two of them would play a game to see who could hold their breath longer while cleaning my belly. Penelope always won, but I think he let her win. We went to the Bahamas. It was the most beautiful, clear, blue water I had ever seen. It tasted so clean, and there was so much to see. Sailing over the coral was like an ocean safari every day. 
There were billions of fish, and I saw my first octopus. She was amazing. She crawled up my rudder one night when we were anchored off Staniel K. I had no idea what she was, but she was quite the climber. She crawled right up over my stern and peered at Penelope. Well, hello there. She stood and stared, wide-eyed at the octopus resting on my stern. Trip, check this out. K.H. stuck his head out of my companionway and gasped. Where did she come from? The ocean would be my bet. See if she'll eat this, smartass. He handed up a piece of lobster he'd been getting ready to grill. She took it and carefully laid it on my combing beside the unexpected guest. The octopus slowly and methodically curled one tentacle around the tasty morsel of lobster, then slid clumsily back into the sea. I'd never seen anything like it, and apparently neither had Penelope or K.H. What would make her come up here like that? How should I know, he said. I had no idea they'd do that. You've got to admit, it's pretty cool. It was absolutely cool, he said. And he was right. Cool it was. But it wasn't over. She was back. But this time, she wasn't empty-handed. Or empty-tentacled. She delivered a piece of broken shell and carefully placed it where Penelope had placed the lobster bite. I assumed the octopus wanted to trade the shell for more lobster, but I was wrong. Only seconds after placing the shell on the deck, she slid over the rail and plopped back into the sea. I was speechless. Well, primarily because I'd never been able to speak, but even if I could have, I would have been speechless at that moment. I wasn't alone. K.H. and Penelope sat with their mouths agape, staring at the broken shell. Finally, they broke out in uproarious laughter, and K.H. grabbed the shell and headed down the companionway. A few minutes later, he came back with the shell laced on a thin leather string and tied it around Penelope's neck. He knelt at her feet, took her hands in his, and said, I don't have a ring to offer you. In fact, I don't have much of anything to offer you except my love and this beautiful broken shell from our friend, the octopus. But Penelope Ann Gibson, will you marry me? She cried and I didn't understand. I'd seen people cry, but only when something terrible had happened. This wasn't terrible. This was good. This was fantastic, in fact. I learned two things that evening, anchored off Staniel K. I learned that an octopus is a very strange creature and that there are two reasons people cry. Penelope threw herself into K.H.'s arms and told him she loved him a thousand times. Your love is all I want. As long as I have that, I'll have everything I need. Of course I'll marry you, but only if the octopus can come to the wedding. I hoped it wasn't going to be my job to find the octopus and deliver the invitation. Not only was she strange, but she was a master of disguise. Once she hit the bottom, I never saw her again. They were married on the beach a few days later. They were so much in love and I got to see the whole thing. It only got better from there. She played the guitar and sang more beautifully after that day. K.H. watched her swim in the ocean and, and admired everything about her. Sometimes they swam together, and I admired everything about them. They were so happy, and they would whisper, I love you, to each other. And just like Thomas and Terry, they made love in my forward cabin, and I didn't watch. I protected and embraced them. I was their home and they were my new family. And then the most wonderful thing happened. Penelope got fat. K.H. talked to her belly. Then our family grew. A midwife came from St. Thomas and Courtney Ellen Holiday was born in my main salon. It was a mess. I didn't know that's how babies showed up, but it scared the crap out of me. Apparently it was normal because I was the only one freaking out. Baby Courtney was beautiful and the midwife cleaned up the mess. Mostly. So Trip Holiday was my sailor's name. What 
an unfortunate name. Knothead was so much better. Even though Penelope had cut out the knots and left him with almost no hair at all, it eventually grew back, and it was normal hair, but he'd always be Knothead to me. What a happy family we were. Penelope, Courtney, Knothead, and Gypsy. <laughs>